everyone, this is Lomi and today I'm making a quick wig for Sophie, my Mystic Kids Lillian. I'm starting by covering her head with plastic to keep the glue from damaging her face up. I've already made a wig cap using pantyhose and a little bit of white glue. For this wig, I'll be using wefts made with white glue, some basic school glue to attach them to the wig cap, and a paintbrush for spreading the glue. I spread glue on the wig cap and then apply the weft to the glue. Brushing a little more glue on top helps it be more secure. Even though I plan for this wig to have a fringe on the front, I go ahead and put wefts all the way around the edge of the wig cap. If you've never made wefts before, I covered that process in another video I posted a while ago. I used the same process for this, but I made them using white glue this time instead of the super fabric adhesive. The biggest difference is that the super fabric adhesive is waterproof, while white glue isn't. However, white glue dries much faster, so if your wig won't need to be washed often, it's just as effective as the stronger glues. The white glue is also non-toxic, which makes it a good option if you don't want to wear a respirator, or if you don't have one. There's not much to this, it's just a matter of patience. I glue row after row of wefts toward the crown of the wig, and then I'll take a short break to let this glue dry before I apply the top. I've saved my best wefts for the very crown. These are the thickest and smoothest wefts, and also the prettiest hair. Because the placement of these pieces is a little bit more finicky, I switch to a thicker glue that's less likely to shift as I move pieces around on top of each other. I apply a few thick wefts at the top just to make sure that all the places where glue is showing underneath are covered. Then it's time to do the part. I lay the very top wefts facing the opposite direction of the way I want them to lay. After the glue is dry, I'll fold them back. This will give me an attractive center part. I do one side at a time, letting the first side dry completely before I put on the other. Once this side is dry, it's time to gently start brushing out the wig and smoothing things over. As I brush, one of the wefts pulls up where I didn't have enough glue applied underneath. You can fix this by taking a small amount of glue on the end of a toothpick and gently working it down in between the wefts. Then squeeze the hair back together over the top, and it should stay put. Since this glue is water soluble, any glue you get on top can easily be washed out later. Since I still don't have a flat iron, I use a large barrel curling iron to smooth out the top layer of the hair. This also flattens the part. Once it's all brushed and smooth, it's time for me to separate out the part I want to cut into the fringe. 
I lift it a few times to make sure I've parted all the way through all the layers, and also to make sure that it's as symmetrical as possible. It's best to cut the fringe a little bit longer than you want, and then trim off the extra just a little bit at a time. You never know how uneven it might be the first time you cut. It's also really dry and staticky here right now, so her hair isn't as smooth as it will be a few weeks from now. You can still see the layers of the wefts in the fringe, but the more you brush this, the more it'll disappear. The different layers will blend together nicely over time. A little more trimming, and now her wig is done. This is a really easy style to achieve, but it's really cute, especially on smaller dolls. I'm glad I darkened up her face up, because it really helps her eyes stand out against this wig. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.